Dave, Dave Michaels, how are you? Be honest. I am doing fantastic, MZ. You are the most positive person I've ever met. Will some of that rub off on me? Can you, can you, can that be arranged? Sure, I'll go in there and start rubbing, rubbing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. What the hell, MC? Well, Why not? It'll. It'll. Can't hurt. We're we're entering the new age of of um of all gender, right? Sure. All yes. gender. Sure, it's, sure. It's, oh, you're all gender radio station. Okay. Should, right. Is that a good one? Sure. Yeah. We're for we broadcast for everybody, MC. Sure. People, dogs, cats, anybody with ears. We uh, we love for them to listen. This is wonderful. Now, yeah. I I have come to an epiphany, Dave Michaels. Oh. If there is any question, you and I were, were on a walk yesterday, and we uh -huh. were talking about, you know, things like the important things. Yeah. You know, like the future of KSCO. Yeah, absolutely. I'm right, and what kind of programming we're going to oh, have. Man. and our, great. That the station will have. Yeah. And so we came, yeah, yeah. came up with some great ideas. Yes. We even talked to the high-priced consultant mm -hmm. who was 3,000 miles away, but he dropped everything to talk to us. Oh, it's, everybody's excited, MZ. Everybody. And you know who's, who's excited as well? Let's not leave them out, is the audience, MZ, because for the first time in a long time, the audience can directly help to keep this programming where it is by going to kseo.com and clicking on the donate button. Or you can go to supportkseo.com and help keep your station um, on the air. There have been people who have been doing that for years, yes. and I'm going to thank them by name. But I, I really should check with them because they might want well, to Well, can we name them by their first name? Like David and Lyle, Sheridan, yeah. uh -huh. Anonymous. Uh -huh. I don't think anonymous. that's his real name. Anonymous. Gene yeah. is another one. Alan, um, another anonymous. Edmund. So uh, you can uh, donate. This is a great time, MZ. This is a it, fantastic it really, time. It really is. And, and I, I, I'm not kidding around now, when, nor are you, when, no. we, say, when we say... KSCO is an, it's not a, it's right. an unique radio station, ah, right? Oh, yes. There is nothing like KSCO anywhere on the planet because we are real, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're not contrived, mm -hmm. you know, we're real humans and uh, with real feelings and real ex life experiences and we, we don't put on any kind of an act. We Absolutely. are, we are who we are. Yes. It's like pop. I am what I am, and that's all mm -hmm. what I am, right? right. And so, um, so yeah, that's a well, great idea about donate. But there's another idea that I have, and your idea is the best for reminding well, people. Yeah, we should become. Well, I won't say obnoxious, but we should be reminding people, just like we have the legal ID at the top of the hour, mm -hmm. KSCO Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. um, we should remind people that if they like KSCO and they want it to continue and they want it to grow and and be better in a world where people are losing their freedoms, mm -hmm. particularly freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. You know, one way that they can do that is just send us a little money. I mean, or send us a lot of money. We're not going we'll, to. We'll, if you want to send a lot of money, that's okay too. You know, MZ, because up until right now, really, the best way to support your radio station, your favorite radio station, and still. A great way is to go and support our advertisers. That's yes. fantastic. Yes. But this is a and more let them know that the reason you're there is because you heard their KSC. Right. Ad. If you need some hardware, go down to Ace. If you want something to eat, go down to uh, Back Nine. But this is a more direct way to help your favorite radio station. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. For sure. And uh, you know, MZ, as far as the Dave Cave goes, you know, we always have a whole bunch of stuff. We just got our shipment in, but something I'm really excited about is this Pro Joint that we just got in. This Pro Joint. Uh, formula from Longevity. Everybody has been asking me, MZ, about hyaluronic acid. What is it? What product do you That's have? That's a Ben Fuchs name, sort of. I've Hi heard him say that. Hyaluronic acid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is the, the pro joint. So if you're looking for HA or a hyaluronic acid, we call it HA because it's too hard to say the other one. Mm -hmm. HA, you are looking for a pro joint, and we just got a shipment in, MZ. I am is excited. Is that a pretty new product? It's relatively new, certainly uh -huh. less than a year old. Maybe, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight months, something like I that. I see. Okay, well, the other thing that I was going to say, Dave Michaels, who's screening a phone call now, um, is um, I, I have a smartphone, which happens to be an iPhone. I have a number of them, actually, and each one is loaded with different stuff, and I don't know where I got it, but I got it. It just shows up. And um, I've also been cleaning up uh, 45, 50 years' worth of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, boxes. You know, I just kept buying these these plastic bins with a with a top that yeah, you yeah. Can, so you can stack a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And instead of going through this crap 
every time I moved or every time I, I, you know, made a change, I just said, "Well, I'll just buy some more of those boxes, and and we'll I'll go over I'll go over them someday when I'm retired and have time on my hands." Right. 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 Well, I'm I'm sort of being forced to go through that stuff. I have found, literally, no exaggerations, Dave Michaels, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of cassettes that contain old KSCO shows from before things were easy to record digitally, you know. And there's so much content there. We can program KSCO many, many, many times over without have, having to, you know, w worry about um, current current hosts and so forth. But, but uh, anyhow, it's a daunting task. It really wow. is. But and then of course on my iPhones I, I just I, I go on walks and hikes and things and I just put the iPhone on and I listen and just things come up. Mm -hmm. Some things are twenty, thirty years old mm -hmm. that I loaded onto the iPhone some time ago. And here's something. Now I'm like I'm making a big deal out of this. I asked Gary, our guest, if I should play this. And so, uh, you know me, I don't take responsibility for anything. I always blame others. Right. So if somebody thinks that this is a bad choice to use up 60 seconds of the KSCO Saturday special... We'll blame Billy. Not Billy. Uh, why not? Billy? Sure. Why not? Yeah, let's blame Billy. Yeah, sure, yeah, why not? Or Gary, let's blame, let's blame Gary. Don't, don't blame me. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. He, he asked me if he should play it, but I didn't right. respond. Right. Okay, here, here, let's do this. Hi, it's MZ from KSCO in Santa Cruz. Recently, I have developed an addiction. It's an addiction to feeling good. What caused this addiction is taking the premium quality plant-derived minerals available from radiominerals.com on a regular basis. I hope that I've been involved in the site distribution is still there. of these minerals for over 20 years, but I'm ashamed to admit that it's only recently that I've made a serious effort to take the minerals every day, not just occasionally when I happen to think about it. It's amazing how different and better I feel when I take these minerals and my body is not minerally deficient. Every body can feel better if they will take care of their body. It doesn't take much and it's not expensive. Check it out for yourself online or via telephone. Find more information, hear lectures, watch videos, read articles, and order online at radiominerals.com. That's radiominerals.com or call our radiominerals.com voicemail at 350-1340. That's 350-1340. Hi, it's MZ from KSCO in Santa Cruz. Recently, I have developed an addiction. It's, an addiction. it's repeating. Okay, well, listen, right. that's, a, that's definitely enough right. of that. How do I turn it off? Uh, throw I... it in the, in the ocean. That's what, <laughs> that's what I do. All right, so listen, Dave yes. Michaels. You must you, go through a lot of That's thugs. an old ad, yeah. and I want to apologize ahead of time if people go to that website and, it, and it's not running. It's still running. It I, is still yeah, running? Good, you it checked right it. Now. Great. Yeah. And, and the phone number probably isn't. Probably not. So use your phone number. Okay, 218-KSCO. That's the best number. 831-218-KSCO okay. from now until uh, forever. From now 18. until forever. 218 exactly. KSEO. Don't forget that number. All <laughs> okay, right, MC. So two, are, are we going to start the show officially let's now? The, and let's start the Dave Cave sale, yes? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes, yes, I'll yes, be yes, out yes, there until three, two. two, one. Good morning. A brighter day is here. Good morning. May we bring you cheer. We've got time. We've got tunes. We've got time, tunes, and temperature. Get up and go, it's today you know on KSCO Radio. Good morning, all you folks out in Radio Land. This is MZ welcoming you to hour number one of the KSCO Saturday special on your favorite radio station, KSCO 1080 AM, 104.1 FM, 95.7 FM, and 107.9 FM. How do you like that? Yep. Good memory. Um, and so stay with us the next uh, couple hours. I think you'll be happy you did. Good morning. Now stay right here on KSCO Radio. That means we're going to have a controversial show. Oh, oh, good. Do you want a controversial show, oh, God, Gary I love, Shapiro? Love controversy. Yeah. Good. I am so excited, 
you and I are on the air together for the first time. It's ever. I, I think we've never, well, I think once we I, I dropped by your booth at the fair about. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, well, but this is the first official time that we've been on the air together. Right, and and I am so excited. Um, oh my God, look who's called. We haven't even opened the phone lines. We haven't even line. started yet. Yeah. Who's we called? haven't even started. We haven't invited phone calls, but someone very special is on the line, and so we're going to interrupt the program. Go ahead. I don't. I have no idea how long this is going to take. Okay. But I can come back another day. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Here. Let, let's just uh, before it goes any further here. Lori, Mrs. Butterworth. Hi. Hi, Mrs. Butterworth. Hi. How are you feeling? I'm good. What How caused are you? you? I'm okay, but uh, I, I want to continue our discussion about nonprofits, our private discussion that I don't mind sharing with our audience. Oh, sure. <clears throat> KSEO but needs to become a nonprofit, and you, you, uh, you have been running the, the Jacob's Heart, which is a fabulous nonprofit um, mm -hmm. that everybody should support. But why are you calling? To correct you. Oh. <laughs> so what I love to do. Okay, good. You know, how can I start a Saturday without correcting you? Okay, and, fine, fine. So, okay, so just, just this, and it's important. This, it, it's not a unique, a, a, and unique radio station. It's an, it's a unique radio station. I was going to tell him not that. And, and, yeah. It's because of the stress on the first syllable. It's a unique okay. radio station, not an unique radio. Yes. I always because thought that if there, if I was taught, perhaps incorrectly, in in grammar, in I don't think it was elementary school. It was probably in seventh or eighth grade, that if the next word is is a, 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 vowel. a, a vowel, not a consonant, right? Right, like an, an, an elephant. elephant. Yeah, an elephant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then then it's an instead of a. Now is that incorrect? That is, I guess according to both of you, it is. is. Well, well, uh, well, here's the deal. Rules have exceptions, and we've talked about this before, about other things in life as well, right? So there's always an exception to the rule. When the, when the following word starts with a U and the first syllable is unstressed, it has to do with the stress. Like, say, um, an, 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 ultimate, uh, 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 an ultimatum. You never say a ultimatum. You say an ultimatum. Correct. Yeah, because the stress isn't on the first syllable. But a unique. It's unique. You, uh, the stress. I'm sorry. The no. stress needs to be. It, it, so it's it's with the stress of the syllable. So it's a. It, it's um. I'm sorry. A, a unique radio station. Unique. It's not unique. It's unique. Unique. The stress is on the second syllable, so the stress is not on that. Not syllable. stress. You, not not stress. You're talking about the accent, not the accent, stress. Yeah, the stress. stress is the wrong word. Even though I've been very, very, very stressed, stressed. No. <laughs> more so than at any no, time in my no, life not, in the last month or two. Not, accent represents those, stress. No, I'm, I'm no, those are those are synonymous. Those yeah. are synonymous. Okay, stress and accent, the same thing. Well, it's a different so kind think, of stress. I prefer yeah. that kind of stress right. than the kind I've been through. <laughs> Yeah, you say a unicycle. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right? a unicycle. Right. Yeah. A unicycle. I'm trying to think whether you. And unicycle. Yeah, that would be. That would sound weird. You yeah. You wouldn't say well, that, your ear right? plays a huge role in it. I mean, which one sounds correct? Uh -huh. If you say um, an, an ultimate, all right? Yeah. Ultimate, the stress is on the first syllable. That's when you would use the and. When it's a you. Make yeah. sense? And you don't say and so unique, you, stress, you say and unique. I mean a unique. A -unique. Right. Okay. A -unique All right, I stand corrected. Thank you to you thank you to it? both of you. I'm never gonna say it again. <laughs> here here I thought I thought I was being um, Grammatically correct. Well, no. more than grammatically correct. Being being uh, you know, something special, you know. Well you and, are that. Well, uh, well, well, you not Let's have a show on grammar because people all people overcorrect their grammar. Yeah. Like you say between you say between you and me. No, you don't say between it's between you and I. yeah, you and I, right? Yeah, well, um, so people, even I know that. Mrs. Butterworth, let me ask: How do you pronounce the yeah. word O F T E N? Often, often, often depends. 
I always say I often. I think often oh. is incorrect. I say often. I don't. It's not incorrect. Those just have to do with regions and and um, a, um, accents, different kinds of accents. I don't think one is incorrect or correct. Let's. Look, I'll look that up. Someone can look that up and see. Um, I think that some words have different pronunciations based on the region where you're from or what you're speaking. It's not necessarily incorrect. But there are certain things that are absolutely incorrect. And saying and and unique radio station is absolutely incorrect, Michael. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks All right. No, I appreciate that. You know. <laughs> I know you thought I was going to call to talk about getting donations for the station, but I just got so bothered by your grammar. Okay. I was I was chomping at the bit to get that in too, but she beat me to it. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Well, you got you, great minds, right? Okay. So. Um, right. Have a great show. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll talk another time. Thank you, Lori, but Mrs. Butterworth. Yeah. It's always a pleasure okay. to talk with you. I such a positive person who does so many good things. She doesn't do any bad thing that I know about. <laughs> well, only, good close, only good things. That is not even close to true. Really? And you know it. Well, you have to tell oh, yeah. me some of the bad things someday. And then okay. and, and give me permission to, to release it to our, our vast audience. Okay, Lori, thanks. Have, right. a, have, Gary, a, good have a good show. All right. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Gary. Is Gary she the Shapiro. one who makes the syrup? That everybody thinks so, but she also uh, came up with um, m w w one of, if not m the, m my favorite um, uh, uh, nonprofits to support. Very good. And that is Jacob's Heart for providing support to families of children with cancer. Excellent. And um, I, I can't imagine a, a, a worse thing to hear than your child has cancer. And that's happening increasingly. And Lori and her... Um, uh, 20, I think 25 plus year organization, uh, Jacob's Heart is dedicated to that. And I think this woman is a saint. I really do. And I think the people who support, uh, I can't think of a better thing to support. Not even KSCO. <laughs> well, wait a minute. If you want to support, no, I, I, this is all coming out wrong. Uh, uh, but also, she knows her grammar, and that's good. That is wonderful. Yeah. Now, you and I became uh, acquainted. We were introduced by a very famous person whom we both know. Oh, yes, Mr. Lehrer, Tom Lehrer. Tom Lehrer, you know. But I knew, I mean, I knew your father. I was quite, I, when I first moved to Santa Cruz, I had a marvelous eye doctor, Dr. Zwirling. He took such wonderful care of me, and I loved him. He, put, he showed me how to put on my contact lens. Boy, he cracked me up that day. He's bulging his eye out and showing me how to do it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's just a wonderful guy. I loved him. Well, what a coincidence. So did I. And <laughs> I was in fifth grade when he taught me what he taught you at whatever age you were. Yes. And it was, it was amazing that uh, people in the fifth grade, in my fifth grade class, would actually forfeit their recess to watch... Young MZ insert his, his contact, contact lenses. lenses in. Yeah, <laughs> they were painful then. But it, and especially if you fell asleep in them and forgot oh, to yeah. take them Terrible. out, because yeah. then your then your eyes were sort of, you know, bent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I I admired him uh, very much. He was a wonderful guy. Yeah. Uh, so and I knew that, but but you and I were actually introduced by this extremely famous person who was an idol to me. Oh, and when me I, when I did When I did Santa Cruz High on the air in 1966, 67, right here in this room, mm. the, one of the records I would love to play was Tom Lehrer's record. Yeah, because he, he was very popular back then. And there was a particular album that I believe is, is his m most popular biggest selling album which is that was the year that was yes mm -hmm. right and yep. that has pollution and vatican rag and i think it's got poisoning pigeons in the park well right? you know it's it's hard to remember now which songs are on which record and of course now you can get a, a greatest hits thing that has everything on it and that's a wonderful thing there's even some videos of him performing <sighs> on that. you could if you if you google uh or use another search engine uh tom Lehrer, uh L e h r e r. Yes, not uh, Lear, but Lehrer. Yeah, Lehrer. Yeah. Um, it, 
a lot of stuff will come up. Uh, yes, audio was, and when video. I was nine years old, I uh, auditioned for my first uh, stage thing, and I sang one of his songs. And then when we met, I was about 30 when we met, and I said, you know, I sang this song when I was nine. He goes, and here we are, which was funny. And uh, we became friends. Uh, I was taking a course from him at UCSC. Math, mathematics. He, not his math class. No? I mean, uh, he did teach mathematics, but he also taught a class which was a marvelous experience for everybody that had a chance to do it that was called the American Musical. And what we would do is we would perform, it was a 10-week course, and we would perform five musicals in front of an audience. Uh, and he would play the piano, and they would be complete performances with singing and dancing and everything else. Uh, and we had, you know, two weeks to put it together and then we would put it on in the Stevenson library uh, dining hall something like that and um, they were well attended and uh, it was really a fantastic experience especially being able to rehearse with Tom and, and being in a rehearsal room with him and him playing the piano and Isn't oh we had so much fun yeah it was really great and, and you actually got to be friends with the man you you know him way more than I do but I called him, someone told me many, many years ago that he's a Santa Cruz resident because yeah. he uh, in is the a, phone book, you can just call in, the, in the phone book, you just call him, what, that's famous celebrity, you could just, <laughs> I didn't believe it. He never thought of himself that way. He always thought of himself as, a, a, as an educator who, as a sideline, did a little bit of show business. And, you know, I said, well, you know, why did you walk away from show business? He goes, well, I never walked away from it, I just stopped doing it. You know, he just, uh, he did it for a while. It was something he wanted to do. And, you know, then he never did it again. He said he's like Diana Durbin or um, uh, um, uh, Greta Garbo. You know, he just walked yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> never looked back. So, and, and, and who else is like that? Uh, uh, well, there's not too many people. Well, well wait a minute. Uh, Doris Day. Well, Doris like Day never walked away. I mean, she worked until she was, you know, she, I mean, yes, at a certain point she retired, but she had a very long career. Uh, but, you know, very few people kind of walk away when they're young, the way uh, Deanna Durbin did that. And uh -huh. Greta Garbo, she stopped working in 1941 and lived another 50 more or more years. Wow. Uh, there was um, um, Louise Rayner, she uh, stopped. But she, she occasionally did stage work or something like that. Grace Kelly, but Grace Kelly, you know... Got married. Right, and became a princess. To, yeah, became a real princess before she tragically was... Uh, yeah, she didn't live very long. Yeah. Um... Talking about Tom Lehrer, yeah. this is why I got my little camera. Oh, so you could play a thing. I play a little bit of that was the year. Though, oh, yeah, one. because your little your little uh, intro said well, there would be tunes. Just designated National Brotherhood Week. This is just one of many such weeks honoring various worthy causes. One of my favorites is National Make Fun of the Handicapped Week, <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> which Frank Fontaine and Jerry Lewis are in charge of, as you know. <laughs> During National Brotherhood Week, various special events are arranged to drive home the message of brotherhood. This year, for example, on the first day of the week, Malcolm X was killed, which gives you an idea of how effective the whole thing is. I'm sure we all agree that we ought to love one another, and I know there are people in the world who do not love their fellow human beings, and I hate people like that. <laughs> Here's a song about National Brotherhood Week. Oh, the white folks hate the black folks, and the black folks hate the white folks. To hate all but the right folks is an old established rule. But during National Brotherhood Week, National Brotherhood Week, Lena Horn and Sheriff Clark are dancing cheek to cheek. It's fun to eulogize the people you despise as long as you don't let them in your school oh the poor folks hate the rich folks and the rich folks hate the poor folks all of my folks hate all of your folks it's american as apple pie but during national brotherhood week national brotherhood week new yorkers love the puerto ricans cause it's very chic Step up and shake the hand of someone you can't stand. You can tolerate him if you try. Oh, the Protestants hate the Catholics, and the Catholics hate the Protestants, and the Hindus hate the Muslims, and everybody hates the Jews. But during National Brotherhood Week, National 
old brother hoodwink gets national everyone smile at one another hoodwink be nice to people who are inferior to you it's only for a week so have no fear be grateful that it doesn't last all year wonderful that was so good I think this is the whole album. I won't play the whole album, but I, maybe we'll play another one. Sure. A considerable amount of commotion was stirred up during the past year over the prospect of a multilateral force known to the headline writers as MLF. Much of this discussion took place during the baseball season, so the Chronicle may not have covered it. But... <laughs> It did get a certain amount of publicity, and the basic idea was that a bunch of us nations, the good guys, would, would get together on a joint nuclear deterrent force, including our current friends, like France, and our traditional friends, like Germany. Here's a song about that called the MLF Lullaby. Sleep, baby, sleep, in peace may you slumber, no danger lurks, your sleep to encumber, we've got the missiles, peace to determine, and one of the fingers on the button will be German. Why shouldn't they have nuclear warheads? England says no, but they all are sore heads. I say a bygone should be a bygone. Let's make peace the way we did in Stanleyville and Saigon. Once all the Germans were warlike and mean, but that couldn't happen again. We taught them a lesson in 1918, and they've hardly bothered us since then. Well, my darling, the Sandman can linger. We know our buddies won't give us the finger. Heil, hail the Wehrmacht, I mean the Bundeswehr. Hail to our loyal ally. MLF will scare Brezhnev. I hope he is half as scared as I. Well, uh, let me tell you a little bit about those songs. So uh, Tom had done an album called uh, Songs by Tom Lair, which he had recorded in his uh, himself and uh, produced and was selling out of his basement when he was a, a student at Harvard. And then uh, the program, That Was the Week That Was, came on the air. It was hosted was by David, David Frost. David Frost, mm -hmm. yeah. And he started composing songs and submitting them for that program, and they loved them. And so each week he had a song on the show. And he said that the woman who sang the songs, uh, you know, basically learned them phonetically. I mean, she had no... She never got the meaning of the songs correctly, and it uh, infuriated him. So then he went out <laughs> on tour and recorded an album of him singing those songs that he had written for that program. And he told me that he was in the... Um, in the studio, in the in the engineering room with the guy who was engineering the live tapes. And he goes, you know, I don't like all that applause. You know, cut down as much applause as you can. And the engineer said, well, I was just in here with Alan Sherman, and he said he wanted more applause. And and um, Tom said, well, he can have the applause well, from my record. Some folk singer record That's you're right. talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> he said he can have the applause from my record. You can yeah. put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, man. What an amazing guy. And he's still living, and he is still, oh, he's, still, well, he's, yes. still, he's still as sharp as ever, right? He, he is. I, you know, yeah. he, one of the things that people asked him all the time was, how come you stopped, you know, writing satirical songs? Um, and he said, well, the, the real world became so satirical and on its own that it didn't need me to satirize. It was too ridiculous to satirize. Uh, and it is interesting when you listen to those songs, how, uh, especially National Brotherhood Week, how prescient he, he was uh, about, you know, our the state of our society today and um well that that should be reissued and it should become a popular tune now but just like we we a, a year or so ago we we devoted a whole saturday special 
to the one of my favorite movies in the world is Mel Brooks's, and I think today's his birthday actually. Oh, Mel happy Brooks's birthday, birthday, Mel! Yeah, um, Blazing Saddles, That's great and movie. how that could never ever be produced today. No, and this what I just played, National Brotherhood Week, would probably never be played today if it was reissued. <laughs> but I want to reissue it here at KSCO, and I think I just did. You just did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, so, what a change! What a world that's changed so much, uh, and and, yeah. and back then. He was considered too, too uh, hot, you know, too hot to hand, a hot, sort of a hot potato, right? Well, he was very successful on the nightclub circuit and so on, but I don't think his records got played on the radio very often. Um, his, his first album was not a political record, but rather a, uh, a satire on different forms of music. He's a brilliant uh, historian of American music and particularly Broadway musicals, and... Um, uh, he knows everything about. It. He's seen every Broadway show. He uh, he gifted me with two things that I treasure. One was his collection of playbills. You know what they give wow. you when you go. So I have like all these original playbills of some of the great uh, shows that he saw that that are classic shows. And he also gave me his uh, soundtrack uh, Broadway cast album collection, which That's I treasure amazing. that as well. He said you'll be doing me a big favor if you take these records. <laughs> 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 who I did. One, one of a kind guy for yeah, sure. Yeah, in, in every way. And he's the man who introduced us, and that was fortuitous for me because it, uh, when my radio program from the bookshelf, uh, which I started doing in around uh, 2000, uh, was airing on KUSP in Santa Cruz, and then KUSP, when it died in 2016, you were gracious enough to pick up my program and bring it over here and. Give it a well, Tom called me one day and and said, uh, "Would you be interested in doing a really high quality, uh, pre-recorded uh, book review program?" And I said, "Sure." And he said, "Well, let me introduce you to Gary Shapiro here." And, <laughs> and they me. they had been. I don't think they had died yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. They they were in the process of dying, probably. Yeah. But m what I understood from what Tom says, they it's a really high quality program that K KUSP had buried at like two in the morning yes. or something. Yes. They let they had so much respect for the show that they moved it from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. <laughs> so um, so that's when you and I were introduced. You told me you knew my dad and so forth. But, yeah. uh, and I've been on the air here since 2016 at m Monday nights at 7, which is a wonderful time. Very so. high-quality program. Thank and you. I, I, uh, I remember, I, I've heard your, people you, that you've interviewed, authors, say to you, that you're their favorite interviewer because you obviously have read every word and every page of their book. Oh, that's nice to hear. Uh, I, I do. I don't want to interview someone if I haven't read their book. Um, I was talking once with Robert Klein, a comedian, and he said uh, that it was unusual that I had read his book. And he said, Larry King uh, never glanced at the book until two seconds before you come on, and then he would ask incisive questions like, why the raised lettering, Robert? <laughs> Yeah. So. We're talking with Gary Shapiro, uh, host of uh, From the Bookshelf here, uh, Monday nights from 7 to 8 p.m. here on your favorite radio station, KSCO. And more recently, host of the Tuesday edition of The Noon Balloon. Yes, you called me, you invited me, I came, and I've been enjoying it. I've been doing it for a couple of months now. A lot of things changed in talk radio when uh, Rush moved to heaven. Mm -hmm. Lots of things. And we knew the day was coming because, you know, for at least a year before it actually came. Yeah. And um, people kept asking, what are you going to do after Rush? What are you going to do after? And we decided that we would at least try putting the show, the locally produced show, Charlie Friedman, you, you know, uh, from um, the the genial genius of Watsonville yeah. on um, from nine to noon instead of from twelve to two. Well, we tried that. It was a pretty good success, and it continues to this day. But that opened up twelve to two, and so we figured, well, why don't we reach out to to you know some different people. To just do well, one different. day a week, you are a different, a different. And, and when I called you, and you said sounds good, and and you put out a, another great but different kind of program. I've been enjoying it. Now you know I I I've known uh, Charlie Friedman for a long, long time. In fact, we used to do 
specials together at KUSP where we would play, because we, we both love, we have an, I love m music from every era, but I also love the music that Charlie loves, and people who listen to his program know that he loves music from the 20s and 30s and 40s, and I love that music as well. So we would do specials together, Al Jolson, Bing Crosby, that kind of thing, of which... I love, and uh, and we're we're both educators, so we we have a lot in common, but we also have uh, some differences in opinions, such as well, uh, <laughs> we had a re I had planned to invite Charlie and, and have a, an old style nineteen nineties style yeah. Saturday special where competent and articulate spokespersons appeared as guests. It, in a nice, friendly, uh, spirited no. discussion that I would moderate. And I think it didn't happen because Charlie had other plans for this holiday weekend. I and I figured, him. hey, let's have you on anyhow. Well, I'm sure I, I'm happy we did so. I'm, ha I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, and we've had discussions, not Charlie and I, but I have discussions with your listeners on the Noon Balloon. And uh, it's been really uh, enlightening and, and fun. Um, and we don't always agree on everything, uh, but we all f often find places where we do agree, and, and that's what I, I love. I mean, uh, one of the things that Charlie said the other day that I took exception to was, you know, that he thought that government was a bad thing and that, that, that people should eschew government and that government should stay away. Whereas I, I don't look at government as the enemy. I think that government does a lot of good things for us and, uh, you know, helps our you know, our, our world survive, our, our country survive by providing education, roads, uh, uh, helping poor and... and, and uh, PPP and, uh, the money. Elderly. And, and, you know, and I, I, I like those pandemic things. Pandemic money. Does right, yeah. yes, all those things. And uh, he also sometimes puts down uh, education, and that surprises me because... You know, he was an educator. For, for instance, the other day, somebody had said, well, this guy has a Ph.D., and and Charlie said, well, you know what that means. You know, first they have to have a B.S., and you know what B.S. is, and then M.S. is more the same, and then they get a Ph.D., which is piled high and deep. And uh, clever but insulting, you know, I, I'm in favor of education and of educated people, and I, I think that's a good thing. I'm surprised to hear that Charlie said stuff like anything like because he's a he's a pretty class act. He doesn't yeah. usually stoop to <laughs> st th stuff like that. Yeah, on, on verbiage like that. Yeah, but uh, you know, and I've had callers here who, um, you know, have told me uh, that they. Uh, I think the show is working because I think about uh, it's about fifty fifty. The people who call who really. Uh, uh, appreciate having me and my point of view, and then people who who do don't. Do you have a word <laughs> to describe your point of view, at least politically? I can't. I don't think I have a word for it. But let me put it this way: You remember when you and I were kids, that whoever became president of the United States, then they were president, whether we voted for them or liked them or not. They were the president. We put their picture up in our classrooms, and they had a period of time in which the country got behind them and they could lead. And then if we weren't happy with what they did, then four years later, we'd vote for somebody else. Yes. Um, and both Democrats and Republicans, whether it's Barry Goldwater and Lyndon Johnson or, uh, or, or Hubert Humphrey and Richard Nixon, both Democrats and Republicans shared a common goal, which is they both wanted what was best for the country. They had different approach to that common goal but they had a common goal and i i think both of those things are lacking uh, i think that it would be really good if, if we could get back to that kind of feeling which is that there's no enemy that both parties have uh, different a, different perspectives different perspectives yeah. um but that we share the same facts not uh, different facts and I, I think one of the things that happened is that uh, liberals and uh, conservatives in the 60s and previous to that were divided usually by an economic thing. That is, when people were young, uh, working class people, then they tended to be uh, liberals. And then as they got older and they made more money, they tended to be more conservative. And it was, a, it was an economic divide. But what's happened now is that it's more about the transformation of society. That is, 
as time goes by, there has been a transformation of society, and there, the liberals tend to embrace this transformation, and conservatives tend to want to stop this transformation, even though the transformation is going to occur. For instance, um, uh, gay rights, civil rights, things like that. Those are things that are happening and will happen, uh, and uh, there's a there's a resistance to those, and that is the, the conservative side, and an embracing of those, and that's the liberal side. So I, I don't think I can put it in one word, but I think those are the things I don't, that I I don't think. like um, labels myself. I, I've always detested them. But yeah. I mean, one of the things about you and me is when, when you invited me to join the station, you know, a lot of people said, oh, you're going to go on the Rush Limbaugh station? That's crazy. And I said, no, you know, Michael Zwirling is not the Rush Limbaugh station. The, you know, one of the things that people don't know about you is that you wanted to support KUSP, that you tried hard to help KUSP stay afloat, that you believe that whatever your point of view is, that all points of view should be aired. Bingo. That's true. And that's something and that I will I respect. always believe that. And, and, and I, I appreciate that, and I love being here, and I, I'm proud of being part of, of KSCO. Oh, wow. Well, that makes me feel great. Thank you, Gary. Um, <clears throat> we're talking with Gary Shapiro, and um, we've already had one caller, and it was, a, it was an important call to set me straight on something <laughs> your, that I needed grandma, to be set terrible straight. terrible grandma. Because I, <laughs> I do not want to uh, be uh, a buffoon or a fool. I just don't want to be. And every <laughs> once in a while, I, I show my, those colors, and I appreciate... Your um, buffoonery is uh, delightful. <laughs> Anyhow, if you want to call in, 479-1080, that's area 831. If you want to email, it's mz at kosco.com. If you want to talk to uh, Gary Shapiro, you want to ask him anything. Uh, oh, oh, my God, there's already an email. Oh, and there's a phone call, too. From, from Pure Heart in Aptos. Oh, yes, we've I, spoken. I am the love envelope. Gary's show, and he has good judicial temperament, in quotes. <laughs> the ultimate test, though, would he fly off the handle at a KSCO joke special? Pure Heart in Aptos. Wow, what, what a great... I, I, don't th I think the answer is no, because knowing... I don't know where Gary real well, but I think I know him well enough to know that he's pretty tolerant. Yes, I know. I haven't. I, there's nothing that will really make me fly off the handle. I mean, I um, I did once uh, dismiss a caller because I thought that they had said something just entirely racist, which I'm, I have li little tolerance for that. But when you're talking about a joke, I mean, I do have a sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, should I try a joke out on you and find out? If I find it offensive or not? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It better be funny, though. It has to be uh, funny. Uh, okay. Um... <laughs> Well, you were mentioning Blazing Saddles, and there's some things in Blazing Saddles that are terribly offensive, but hilariously funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna think of I'm gonna think of a joke, but I think the reason that Pure Heart wrote that email is because he remember we did four uh, Saturday joke specials. Yeah. In 1996, 1997, and my father was here because he has a great sense of humor, as you know. Mm. Uh, he had already had his stroke, so he he was a little hard to understand. No, no, that no, that's too. That's he wasn't hard to understand. He didn't sound like he used to sound. He had sort of a nasal pharynx type quality to his voice, but he still had the same great sense of humor that he always did. And then we had John Muth, who was the originator of the noon balloon mm. on, on KSCO. Uh, and John and my father would tell really great jokes, uh, many times very raunchy jokes. And I would go on every time. We, we did four joke specials um, over like a four, 12 or 14-month period. And my mother and my sister were very upset with me that I wanted Dad to go on the air to tell jokes and some pretty risque, you know, <laughs> jokes. As he was My known dad used to do, to tell risky jokes as well. yeah, and they thought it was terrible that I did that. I said, and, and the, I said, if Dad doesn't want to do it, he won't. But he clearly wants to do it, and he did do it. And I'm sure there are people in our audience listening today who remember some one or more of those Saturday joke specials. And 
they were pretty, pretty raunchy. Pretty raunchy. Well, uh, you know, I uh, also, in addition to all the and things... And pretty that ethical. Doing, eth eth ethnic. Ethnic. Ethnical. Uh, ethnic. Yeah. Ethnic. Well, I you wish know, people would stop. I'm going to turn off the damn phone. Because yes, put this on. People shouldn't... There. Anybody who knows me... Maybe maybe it's a robocall, but anybody who knows me, uh, knows that I'm on the air now, and I do not want to be disturbed. So I teach. I'm a teacher. I yeah. teach. Uh, I teach film appreciation at Monterey Peninsula College, and one of the things that that comes up often in either uh, doing my book interviews or on the noon balloon or when I'm teaching my film classes is you know political correctness and how people feel about art from the past and how those things might be considered in our enlightened society today. That is, we are enlightened about a lot of things that we weren't enlightened about before. Um, a, a classic example would be the Pepe Le Pew cartoons. So I think Pepe Le Pew cartoons are hilarious. That is, he's, it's, uh, they all have the same plot. Pepe Le Pew is a skunk. A cat... <laughs> A cat gets painted a white stripe, a black cat gets a white stripe painted on her, and Pepe Le Pew immediately assumes that she is a skunk as well, and he's so in love with himself that he can't imagine that anybody would not love him, and he forces himself on this uncomfortable uh, cat who tries to escape. It's yeah. the same plot every time. <laughs> and it's always funny. But what if, what if you were a victim of sexual assault? Then every time you watched a Pepe Le Pew cartoon, you might feel PTSD from that cartoon, and that might be greatly offensive. And if it actually truly is offensive to you, then that is legitimate. And therefore, although Pepe Le Pew cartoons are funny, if there is a, po a, 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 a portion of the population that are offended by them, couldn't we come up with funny things that are not offensive to yeah. a portion of the... Comp right, so... Yeah. All right, now that we know... We won't make any more Pepe Le Pew cartoons, but that doesn't mean that we can't look and enjoy at the Pepe Le Pew cartoons that exist already. In other words, now that we're enlightened, let's change our way of thinking and not do the same thing. But if we're watching an old film, then we're going to see, okay, it's okay, we're going to be aware that there are things in that film that today we would find offensive. And it's good to see those things, but it shouldn't be the only thing that we see, that we can also see the artistry that produced what are the, whatever this piece of art is and appreciate it for what it is in its historical perspective. Uh, we are very enlightened today, but we're not so enlightened that 20 years from now people won't look back at the art that we've produced and say, how could they have done that? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, my father was Jewish, and he was... He tended to be offended, and understandably when people would make some remark, offhanded remark to him, not realizing that he's Jewish, m making reference to uh, Jews and, and money, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, I, sting I, and stinginess. I'm and so offended forth. by those things as well. Okay. I want to ask, I don't know whether my father would be, I, I wish I could ask him yeah. if he would be offended by this joke, which I've told many times on the Saturday special, because I don't have a good memory for jokes. Okay, yeah. But I, this, is, this is one joke that... I, I want to know if you and you're Jewish. Yes, and I I'm am. Jewish. Yeah, and um, I guess Tom there was Lair a time, well. and Tom Lehrer too. Yeah. Um, Grandpa the, Marx is also Jack Benny. Right. Um, okay. Uh, no. How, how 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 was copper wire invented? How, how was copper wire invented? Two Jews fighting over a penny. Okay. Yes, that is an offensive joke. That's offensive. But uh, you know. Um, when I was, uh, I remember once when I was working um, retail here and uh, a guy said, I was working at Palace Art and Stationery when right. it was on 41st Avenue. And a guy came in and he said, um, uh, you see that briefcase you have over there for $50? And I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, I got one at the flea market the other day for five bucks. The guy wanted seven, but I Jewed him down a couple of bucks. Oh. And, uh, you know, he's, he doesn't realize that he's made an anti-Semitic remark. Right. Um, Another friend it's become of, part of the lexicon, unfortunately. Yeah, another friend of mine said, well, I'm going to L.A. Um, for a conference, and then I'm coming right back. And I said, well, why don't you stay overnight? He goes, well, the only person I know down there is my friend, and uh, she's very, uh, you know, Jewish. <laughs> and I said, what do you, what do you mean? And he goes, well, she's really loud. And I mean, it, I mean, it was just a, uh, there was an, un, there was absolutely no explanation for his, you know, Anti-Semitic remark, yeah. Slur, yeah. So, uh, no, I do think that a joke that like that 
I, uh, uh, that talks about Jews being cheap and fighting over a penny is stereotypical and offensive. Yeah. On the other hand, when I used to watch the Jack Benny show, he had a... Oh, that was his whole thing, about him Mr. Being cheap. Stingy. Yeah. But, he, but he had a lot of things. He was vain, he yeah. was stingy, he wore a toupee, and, 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 and his writers wrote jokes about those things that wasn't about him being Jewish, it was about yeah. him being Jack Benny. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, he had a dialect comedian, Mr. Ketzel, and Mr. Ketzel would come in and speak with the Jewish dialect, and he would say, "Oh, they were at the air. Uh, they were at the train station," and um, he says, "Oh, Mr. Ketzel, what are you doing here? I'm going to Chicago, and boy, will my wife be surprised. She doesn't know you're coming. She doesn't know I'm going." <laughs> I, I I didn't find that offensive. I I enjoyed Jewish dialect uh, jokes. Um, Myron Cohen was a comedian who told them. Uh, for instance, but Myron Cohen always used a very... When he spoke, he would speak in a very proper voice, and then he would lapse into the character, you know, and I, I found that a little... But, you know, uh, but I, I'm... pretty I'm, good at that. <laughs> pretty good. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Well, um, okay, so, um, yeah, I, that's one of my favorite things is offensiveness. <laughs> gr gr growing up, um, my parents would require us kids to uh, be members of the NAACP and the ACLU. So I guess it's a pretty, I don't, don't hate labels, but it was a pretty liberal household. Good. And, um, and we, um, somehow we changed. I changed when I tried to get a building permit to build a, a, a house on property that I had uh, purchased. Yeah. And this is why I was pretty young. I was probably 27 years old. And my politics changed pretty quickly when uh, I had to jump through the hoops I had to jump through to get a building permit. I, I, I've said this before on the air, too. I, it felt like I was treated as if I was seeking to develop every bit of open space on the coast between Santa Cruz and San Francisco <laughs> to build a, a, a lousy house on a hillside, step, stepping up a hill on Escalona right at the um, head of Laurel Street. So your personal um, uh, encounter led you to a complete political transformation. I would say pretty complete. It got me to become, and I, again, I hate labels again, but I, people still call me a closet liberal. Yeah. But, I, but I'm, I, and I don't like labels, but I'm, I think more conservatively. Well, you know, you know? there's, a, there's, I can think of a, a specific um, thing that we could talk about. You know, uh, I think what happens when, when you start talking about politics and you get into specific things, it can sometimes be um, uh, contentious and, and difficult. But I can think of one that I'd like to discuss with you, but I see that we're... Uh, I want to spend more time. Oh my it, God! I... You're a great host. <laughs> way better than me. Because you really you notice the clock on the wall. <laughs> and if you I'm hadn't mentioned that. that, the 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 news alligator would have chomped us and you that know, would right in mid sentence. So uh, what I'd like to do is when after we come back from our break, I'm going to propose something to you and and we can discuss it. That's what we call a tease in the radio biz. Huh? <laughs> yeah. All righty. Uh, we're with Gary Shapiro uh, this hour. Looks like Colonel Terry and Nancy and Carmel have been waiting uh, patiently on the phone. Oh, good. We will get to those callers and hopefully others next hour. Here good, I love KSU. talking to both of them. Yeah, and um, and new callers, too. Hope, may, maybe we can get some new callers. Good. I, I, I think new callers are very, very important because, to me, it's a barometer of how good a job I'm doing as a host. If all I could get, and please don't take this... Don't yeah. be offended by this. Yes. If all I could get is the same eight callers that call every show on KSCO, yeah. I'm not doing my job very well. Well, you know, yeah. okay. I, I want. I'm new around here, but I've I've enjoyed all the calls that they're, I've. They're they're all they're all great callers, and anybody who enjoys KSCO and wants to be part of it, uh, you know, we we very much appreciate four seven nine ten eighty. Yeah, our favorite radio station. It is hour two of the Saturday special with your host, MZ. Dave, Dave Michaels, how are sales in the Dave Cave today? Sales are all right, MZ. 
but I want them to be better. Oh. I want them to be better. So are, let's berate the audience now, no, you know, to say you've got to do a better job. Let's not do that. Let's instead encourage them to come down and take advantage of the sale now before things sell out because this sale is going to be going on all week. But the early bird gets the worm, MZ. We know that. If you want to get your hands on what, you know, you want, the stuff that you want, you need to get there early. That's the best way to do it. I'll be out there until 2 o'clock today, all week next week, 12 till 7 as well. But don't wait until then. The early bird gets the work. We were talking about donations oh, yeah. earlier, okay? Great idea. Which is a wonderful way to um, benefit the, your favorite radio station. And you're sure, we've talked to Jaunty, and it, the, the donate button is prominent on ksco.com, or is it, or is it, or is it K, support ksco? Either one. Okay. So you can go there and send money through PayPal, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to, uh, to our station. But another way to support our station, mm. besides the obvious of supporting our advertisers and telling them that you're you're in their place of business because they advertise on KSCO, and they heard it and they appreciate that you that they support KSCO, right. there is yet another way to do it, and that's visit you at the Dave Cave, and you get the 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 double whammy, you know, the twofer, mm -hmm. you know, of of benefiting your own health and benefiting the health of your favorite radio station and, at the same time. And by the way, MZ, I still have a few catnip plants, so anybody who wants to stop by and pick up the Arthrodex, I'll give you a little sprout of catnip. The cats go crazy for it. They start acting goofy and silly and start rolling around and chasing their tail. It is so fun. <laughs> catnip, I'll give you one for free if you stop by and pick up your Arthrodex. How does that sound? That is so cool, but oh, it's, it's got to be during the next hour, right? Or are you going to extend? Until 2. I'll be here until, until 2, two today. Okay. Yeah. Great, All Dave right. Michaels. All right, MZ. That is wonderful, and... Uh, uh, how do I play the, uh, okay, here's the, here's the cursor, and here's the hour two intro, and let's make sure that the volume is up, and three, two, one. Oh, hello, darling. I hate to hang up on you, but I'm sorry, baby, but I have to go. It's time for that wonderful record show. I have a sinking feeling that last hour I might have offended Nancy and Carmel. I'm hoping that's not the case and that she hung up just because she didn't want to wait over the break. Maybe she had to, you know, go to the can or something. I'm sorry, baby, but I really gotta go to KSCO. Bye. Anyhow, Nancy and Carmel, if I did offend you, please forgive me and call back, and we'll take your call right away. Do we but still have a caller on hold? We do have a caller, and we it's Colonel Terry. And let's, let's talk to Colonel Clearly, I haven't offended him. No, let's talk to him. Because he waited. <laughs> he waited. And, and so let's talk to Colonel Terry. And um, I, I have to do the right thing here. And hit this button, and there you are, Colonel Terry. Hi there. Hi. Good morning. Uh, MZ, primarily, uh, I extended my patience because of my high regard for Gary Shapiro. Oh, I f and and I I think Gary sensed that. <laughs> I think he did. Because well, it's mutual. I, I've called into his program, and we've had points of view differences that were mostly compatible, but somewhat distinguishable. And Gary, I want to compliment you. Uh, on the book talk program uh i try and catch it every monday no matter what i'm doing i appreciate that uh in addition to your noon balloon participation but i go back to fi having found you on kusp quite some time ago wow and i caught your programs then and i also would get up and stay up until two in the morning <laughs> You were relegated there. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. You should dust some of those off if you've got them recorded. I do. I, I occasionally throw a, an archive recording in there. Okay, well, oh. some of them were excellent. Well, nonetheless, and MC, it's excellent for you to have uh, acquired Gary and his talent to K. To K we K love to acquire special people with their special talents. <laughs> now, Gary, my politics, to shift a little bit, are I, have, I do know a lot. I worked in White Houses, I worked on Capitol Hill, I worked with Ralph Nader in my youthful idealism. And 
I feel very well educated and well informed about the status of the world and where it's been and where it's going. Thus, my politics as a person of goodwill or what I call the smart wing, um, I'm the well-informed smart wing. I, I see that both parties, trapped in their extremes, are damaging to the country. They don't recognize the consequences of their narrow extremes. And therefore, I think we need a new political party called the smart wing, which is or a coalition of, of, of smart balance. What do you think? Well, um, I, I, I like the idea, but I, I also would love to see us have our two-party system work well again. As it used to. Yeah, that would be my preference. But if we have to abandon uh, the system we have, I mean, obviously it's not working, so something has to happen. Well, join my coalition of uh, smart people in the middle. <laughs> All right. Has, have you ever had to reject anybody, Colonel Terry, who, who maintained that they were smart, but you knew that they weren't? Uh, yes, I've, I've, I've rejected stupid people. And sort biased. of like KSCO does, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. That's good. All right. Hey, thanks for thanks calling. For Here's call. Nancy and Carmel. Thank you for calling back, Nancy. Had I offended you, or did you just have to uh, uh, go, uh, serve nature's call? <laughs> well, when Gary said he was going to propose to you, I thought maybe oh, no. <laughs> you wouldn't be taking calls till after that. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm glad you called so, back. Congratulations, you two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't meant that kind of proposal. <laughs> no, I know you did. I'm a married But man. real quick, um, regarding the vowel thing. Oh, yes? The reason why you don't say it with a U is because a, a U is pronounced like a Y, which is a hard vowel, and only soft vowels are the ones that are preceded by the N after the A. Like the a word I O U and sometimes W, right? What was that? Right. So A unicycle. The what vowels? Yeah. Yes, A. No, -E Y. Oh. A E I O U. And sometimes Y. Sometimes Y. And sometimes Y and sometimes W. Yes. Or so anyway, because the word K. unique sounds like <laughs> Yes. Because unique sounds like a Y, that's why you wouldn't say the N. However, with an er with a word like herb that starts with a consonant. Herb. Herb. Yeah. You still say an herb because, an herb. You, because most the, people don't pronounce the H. Because the H is silent like the P in ocean. <laughs> and like many vowels are called Spelling soft, is not one of your things. And that means you don't... <laughs> yes. <sighs> yeah, no, we're Do I have to, to get my ruler out, you guys? <laughs> She's going to hit us over the radio. <laughs> now, the other thing I wanted to say real fast, if it's okay, yeah. is I was taught, and I know I was taught this, and I've looked it up, and there's no reference to it anymore, but I, I'm totally sure in junior high or someplace I was taught, you only use the word gender when referring to language okay words so when did it become a description of someone's sex because when i used to fill out forms it didn't say gender it said sex mf sex well and we are sex we aren't gender well it has changed i don't know when it changed but it definitely has and we must embrace the change but i mean Okay, it's just that I feel like if I was taught a rule like that, I guess people just like to change language without, without it ever being officiated. Or... <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, love you guys. Thanks of for course the call. You know Thank that. you for loving and us. Did you we get love, my email or about... I love you. Do you love Nancy? Well, I'm very fond of her, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, Gary. Yes. Gary, we got to follow up on that McCartney thing I was talking about. Oh, good. Yes, let's do that. Well, thanks so much for the call. We'll, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There, there goes Nancy in Carmel. The Nancy in Carmel. Just, not just any Nancy in no. Carmel. No. Okay, don't be afraid, Kathy the Troll writes in this email. Okay. To tell your guest that things are not like when we were young. 
The government well, I know has, they're not. The government has been taken over by leftists that want all the power. The universities have been indoctrinating their students to get us to where we are. All these rights are being used by these leftists as a cover for what they're up to. You know it, Michael. We all need to stop pretending when we're uh, around a liberal. And that's from Kathy the Troll. Okay, well, I don't agree with any of the things that she said there, but that's okay. Um, let, me, let me talk to you about this thing that I wanted to ask Please. you about. Okay, good. All right, so, the, uh, again, uh, when you bring up specific points, one of the things that, you know, one of the things that, that just happened in that email from Kathy is just like piling on a bunch of things. And so uh, let's just take one thing and kind of look at it. So um, after the, um, the insurrection uh, in, in January, that, that is a bunch of people, thousands of people stormed the capital of the United States in eight different places. They breached the capital. They broke windows. Two people were killed. They went inside. They um, threatened to uh, kill members of Congress and the vice president. And they wanted to disrupt the vote, the the uh, certification of the of the vote, and they did succeed in disrupting it for a while. That actually happened. There's films of that happening. We all saw it. It happened. There's films. It happened. There's no way the uh, uh, you know this uh, the, the congressman uh, who said uh, it didn't happen, who said you could look at films. And it looks like just like people on a uh, on a tour. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that was um, uh, uh, I can't remember now the name of the GOP uh, congressman who said that. Uh, but he said, you know, oh, if, if you look at those films, they're just pay behaving like anybody on a tour. And and that's just not true. That's that's demonstrably untrue. Um, and so I've been asked by people here on the Nin Balloon, well, how can you call it an insurrection, and why is it such a big deal, and what about the Black Lives Matter? So in other words, um, skirting the issue or absolutely lying about the issue. And I think that that's an example of how, you know, let's, whether you're liberal or, or, or conservative, that's a thing that happened. Let's acknowledge that it happened and and deal with it, rather than to pretend it didn't happen. Pretend the insurrection didn't happen. Right. To say, well, that wasn't an insurrection. So, and what, but, but it was an insurrection. It was. I mean, people went into the Capitol to What do to people stop. who say it wasn't an insurrection say it was? Well, a riot, or in the case of this uh, uh, a Republican... Um, what is his name? Maybe somebody can call in and remind me his name. Uh, he said, he got on the air, and he said, hey, you can look at these films, and it just looks like a tourist uh, respectfully walking through the Capitol like any time. Whereas if you look at the films, you see people breaking windows, beating police with uh, fire extinguishers, uh, hockey uh, sticks, uh, the American flag, people walking through the Capitol waving the Confederate flag... Um, asking to hang Mike Pence, uh, defecating on the floor, stealing stuff, going through the private uh, papers of senators in, in the Senate chamber. Those things happened. That occurred. Yeah. So that's where, you know, that's where I have a problem. When, when you know, rather than say, okay, that did happen, and let's investigate it and find out who, what, who was responsible for it, no, it didn't well, happen. I, I Let's think, move on. I, I think they're, they're, Nancy Pelosi is going to investigate it, isn't that? Yes, but when she proposed a bipartisan investigation, the Senate turned that down and said, no, we're not going to have a bipartisan investigation. And now they're saying, well, her, her investigation is partisan. You see the game that they're playing? Mm -hmm. we, we, sh Let's have a bipartisan one? No. All right, then we're going to have a partisan one. Oh, it's partisan. Right. Well, um, not uh, any not any surprise to me. The f phone uh, they lit is, up right is, away. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's almost full.
not totally full. <laughs> All right. They're going to tell me uh, why we I'm do wrong. it. Should we do it? Well, I have a feeling that this first person here is not going to tell you that you're wrong All in right. any way. Let's find out. Billy. Hi, Billy. Hi, Anthony. How are you today? Fine. How are you, Billy? Well, you know, I'm calling apart fast. <laughs> old, age, old age is really tough. Isn't um, it? But consider the alternative. That's always what they say. Youth? Yeah. Youth? I heard that. No, uh, if you don't grow uh, old. Wasted then... on the young, they say. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I get that. So, uh, I called up with a compliment. Oh, good. I love compliments. Right. You, you like, and I are very much alike in that like regard. Compliments. Yeah. Is it a compliment for for MZ or for me, Billy? For you, actually, not for MZ. Oh, good. MZ, <laughs> I complimented him enough. You know. <laughs> but uh, I wanted MZ to know that I think, uh, and I wanted everyone to know, Dave, for example, that I think you are really a great talk show host. I love hearing you, and I want more. I want more. Uh, uh, what the hell's your name? Hero. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm more goddamn <laughs> Uh oh, yeah. Well, you could just call me. So that's all you called to say? You want more Gary? Yeah, that's all I called to say. I want okay, more well, Gary. That's I good enough. Any, what there. else do you want me to No, that's good enough. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what's wrong with conservatives if that's what you need. I, I'm available. Well, we get enough. Of we got a lot of that. Yeah, I'll handle that. But thanks so much for, for your call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Billy. Yeah, thank you so much for your call. Take next. That's Rory in Watsonville. Hey, Rory, you're on. Thank you, gentlemen. So, Gary, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna disagree with you vehemently, and oh, I'm gonna good. give another side to the story because you just gave up a, a a collectivist Marxist party line. How many, if I can ask you a couple questions, sure. how many guns and weapons were brought to this so-called insurrection? I don't see how that's... Uh, Zero, well, Gary. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Before no, you no. go on, Roy, no, you, asked, you, said you, wanted, you said you wanted to ask me a question, and before I even get a chance to answer, you, you shot in with your answer. Do you want to yeah, ask me questions? Air, Gary. Do you want to Gary? ask? Do you want to give Gary? me a chance to respond you, to your question? I gave you three or four seconds. Dead air is deaf. The radio. <laughs> You're stalling. I'm no not guns. stalling. I'll answer it for you. No guns, Gary. Well, you no can have weapons. the whole conversation the by yourself if you'd prefer. Listen, I'm laying out my case. The people stood in statuary hall within the rope lines. What kind of an insurrection is that? Did you see the Not films of them breaking windows, smashing, pushing yeah, police? Those are, those are agent, agent provocateurs, Gary. They were doing No, that there are thousands Trump of people in eight different places Gary? where they breached the Capitol. Rory. Gary? Where they breached the Capitol, and in, uh, that, Gary, that's what you're, you're saying is incorrect. No, sir, I am not dishonest. You're I have dishonest. the phones in front of me. You know who Michael? You know who Michael Yon is? No, I don't. The great war correspondent. No, he I was don't. in the Capitol the day before. He uh -huh. identified three Antifa cells that he knew by name. He recognized them. That's how much he knows. Okay. I've never heard they of him. They were already what, there. He, he's they, a reporter the, for the who? Tangling. He's self-funded. Go look him up. Michael Yon, Y-O-N. Everybody can look him up. He's, okay. He takes subscriptions if you want to get more more stories. Yeah. Okay? Listen, they were at the Capitol tangling with the police while the president was still giving his remarks. That yes. is fact. These yes. are agent provocateurs. Why do we have the term agent provocateurs? They were set there to cause trouble. Gullible, albeit ignorant, Americans waltz into that Capitol building, and now they find themselves in trouble. There's pictures of the Capitol Police holding the doors open. Yes, they held okay? them open because and they had the been overrun. Just a minute. No, just a minute. It's the responsibility of Leader McConnell and Speaker Pelosi to provide security for the Capitol. The president requested 10,000 National Guard troops to keep the peace before this event. He was turned down. It's not his jurisdiction. This was a total setup. It was executed perfectly. Okay? That's what happened. No insurrection. If that was an insurrection, they would have burned that building to the ground. How do you do that? Within rope lines, with incendiary devices, like Molotov cocktails. And, and, and Mr. Sullivan, who's part of BLM, was right there when Ashley Babbitt got shot by one of Mike Pence's uh, bodyguard details. So this this thing is gonna it'll eventually come out, but I I 
Well, it won't come out if there's no investigation and the resistance of an investigation. I want an investigation. I want an investigation. I want a bipartisan investigation. I think that I think McConnell's covering his traps, tracks, excuse me. He, he was responsible for the lack of security on January 6th. They knew half a million people were coming. You never you never let your capital just be open like that without any protection. That's insanity. Uh-huh. OK, and that's what's going on. This is planned. And people, unfortunately, dummies walked into a trap. Okay, people were there. They said, I'm not going in that building. That's a trap. So anyway, and the other thing. Does this look like people walking through? uh, uh, Does this look like people walking politely through? uh, I wish Gary could see it, but there's there's a there's a bunch of. I've seen the film. I mean, I wish they've uh, got a lot of film they haven't released either. Okay. I've, I've seen plenty of the film. Agent provocateurs broke those windows. People were saying no Antifa, stop them. There were people physically pulling those vandals off the building. Is, is there okay? any possibility they that Rory is, like- is Rory is correct here? No, there's absolutely no. He is completely incorrect. He is relying on one person. Gary, you're, a, you're dishonest. No, you're I'm, dishonest. I'm, I'm not dishonest. Michael Young's one guy. I didn't say I was relying on one person. Come on, Gary, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, you did tell you us are that you dishonest. Were... I no. called you... I called you a month ago, and I said the border's being overrun with over 150,000 people a month. Uh, so and wait a minute. Said, no, 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 the border's closed. Uh, You're okay. dishonest, Gary. This, I'm calling there, you there, out, brother. There you are, are There are archives of all of our programs. That's not a statement that I ever made. Um, You're dishonest, Gary. Uh, Roy, we're gonna we got to move on, but I just want to make sure what you're saying. Yeah, that's are, are, you saying say. are, are, you. are you saying are are you saying that? Did he hang up? That, that, no, he's still there. But uh, that Gary, at one point on his show, made the statement that the, there that about the border. What about the border? What I don't know. I didn't say it, so I don't no, know. No, you what said he... the border's closed. No, no, you said the border's closed. I said there's over 150,000 people a month now. Streaming across our southern border. I never said you the border. No, the border's closed. Okay. All righty. Well, oh, come on, Gary. thank you. Uh, thank you, Rory. Here, our next caller is Nick <laughs> in Boulder Creek about insurrection. Nick, you're on. Yeah. Hey there. Um, I just want, I wanted to say the first thing that I heard was very dishonest, too. He said that two people were killed in this uh, insurrection, as he calls it. Yes. And uh, a, a total of six people died in this uh, okay. insurrection. The only person who was actually killed was the lady. Um, who well, was no, there was by. also another woman who was trampled. No, no, listen, no there listen. wasn't a woman who was trampled. Yes, they there said, was. They said. They said. This is the, this is the fact. Five died of cardiac arrest. A woman and was trampled. Was this killed. happened. A woman was trampled. She was and one of the protesters. She, she was trampled she was by the crowd. Up. They carried her mm-hmm. away, and she died in the hospital. Well, and what was her name? Uh, well, I don't have her name at the tip of my tongue, but it is here. Yeah, see, that's, that's, it's not true. Well, just because she, I don't have not, her name at the was, tip of my she, tongue doesn't she, mean that it's not she, true. It is, in fact, but anyway, true. And, then the, and the second thing is, is when we call something an insurrection, that means we're actually an insurrection. Um, that is this, trying this to was, stop this, the government of the United States from participating. This basically was a riot that got out of control. And I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like dishonesty. All right. And it gets really I'm going to have to use the pot here. Go ahead, uh, yeah, Gary. Yeah, uh, let me respond because he just keeps talking over me. No, it was in fact an insurrection and not merely a riot because the idea behind the rioters was to stop the function of government. They wanted, they, they declared it, they yelled it, they spoke it. They declared that they wanted to stop the certification of the vote. And that's exactly what they did. I want you to look up one specific episode of South Park. And it's no, I'm not relying Smug. on South Park for any oh. anything. No, 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 no. no. It, it's called Smug, and and it would definitely describe you. Well, you can insult me all you like. Is that a kind like. thing to say, Nick? You can insult me all you like, but that doesn't, uh, you know. He hung have, up. Okay. <laughs> he hung I'm up. smug because I am speaking the all truth. All right. Uh, Shelly in Monterey, what do you want to talk um, about? Hi, MZ. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Um, well, hey, Gary. I usually really enjoyed you with your your off-the-shelf. Uh, from the bookshelf? Yes. Uh-huh. From the bookshelf. 
I always enjoyed that, and especially when you did the interviews with the person that wrote the book. That was always great. Yeah, that's what I did. But now that I see this um, hypocrisy that you were speaking of as far as this insurrection and how wrong it is and how people are denying it, could you not... Could you not admit to me that the same thing is being done with these terrorist groups like Antifa that are burning down buildings or that have have killed people, have maimed people? I, I don't understand how you can say that out of your mouth about... Well, the only, the only way wonder. that I can say things is with my mouth, but let me say this. Um, but how could you when say you, it when with you, a when you, straight face? Well, I can... I can how I, could you say that? I'll, I'll tell you how. You saw what everybody else Do you saw. want me to answer your question? You I saw? certainly will. You're going to defend the terrorist group Antifa? Is well, that what you're going to do? Well, did you want me to answer your question? Okay, let me, let me just go ahead and... For, just for giggles, let me hear. All right. So, you know, I used to be a middle school teacher. And my middle school students, whenever they did anything wrong, they always said, yeah, but he, but he started it, or he did this, or you should have seen what she did. In other words, what you are saying is, because there are other no, no, incidents, no, 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 no. I'm because not, I'm there not are other incidents, let, let me finish what I'm saying, let me finish, I'm what I'm, let me finish my point, please. You are saying that because th this happened by these people, and this riot happened by this people, that that means that that wasn't an insurrection. That's why I'm singling out this no, one specific topic. My words? I don't think I twisted I them. That at all. You said I, I was talking. You said I was hypocritical because you are defending Antifa and these. these uh, have I offered any defense of Antifa? I don't think I've offered any defense of any terrorist group. Well, then let I'm, me hear you denounce them. Let well, me hear you. Well, I don't know enough right about now. what you're talking about. In other words, I have the oh, evidence you in are front of me. Incredibly, incredibly a hypocrite, and uh, nothing you say. I don't think I'm being hypocritical. Okay. I am not even going to listen to your shelf whatever show. You're a, a Shelly, a come on, Shelly, Shelly. I might not like what, what I might not like you things that, that, that Gary more. says and Gary now those terrorist group and he won't even do it. That is a shame. But no you're... wonder you get along with BS so well. You should be ashamed of yourself. My daughter is a Marine and she would go out and protect someone that wants to burn a flag. Because that is protected. Yeah. I can't believe my daughter would be maimed or killed for you, for a person like you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm not. Uh, I, I uh, thank your daughter for her service, though. Okay, the person hang, hung up. Um, all right, uh, Richard Salinas. You want to talk about Gary, or you want to talk to Gary? Go ahead. Well, Hi, not, Rich. Not so much talk about Gary, but uh, yeah, he's obviously part of the liberal side, which believes all the lies they keep putting out. There are videos of the of the security waving people into the into the uh, uh, Congress there, uh, and when you see people in there, they're just milling around. They're not rioting. They're not trampling. Does this over. look like a picture of people milling around? I'm showing it to I Michael. Don't know what I haven't well, he's, seen show, what he's showing me. Uh, yeah, it, it looks. They're not look at. They're not rushing the building and pushing people out of the way. They're not. Other than, huh? That you're saying they didn't rush the building and they didn't push people out of the way. They didn't break yeah, windows. They, they didn't beat police. A number of the entrances there. They had the doors are wide open. Security is waving them in. Well, they're supposed to be protecting him if they're, if they're right rushing back. the building. Okay, all right. Well, well there that... are people that were put in there. Nancy Pelosi set this up. I have a pretty good feeling. And she told them because they requested some backup, and they didn't give them the backup. Nancy Pelosi was one of the people in, this, in the line of getting the backup when this thing started. And they refused to do it. Nancy Pelosi, at the moment of the insurrection, was conducting her business in Congress. She was trying to certify the vote, which is what the um, which is what way. the uh, protesters were trying to get them to do. Really, uh, set it up in advance. 
so that the people would get there. That's what. So you're saying you're happen. saying that it's Nancy Pelosi who set this thing up, even though it was President Trump, nothing. even though it was President Trump who urged people to march down to the Capitol. Well, I don't know, maybe uh, Casio Cortez did it. I don't know, but Nancy Pelosi, I thought, was the uh, head of this Congress. So yeah, she set it up. She set it all up for this to happen so they could use this against Trump and try to do another another on Trump. All it's, it is. It's it's, it's very fascinating that you see it that way, um, because that's just, uh, you know, it, it's just really interesting, uh, because I just can't imagine that you could look at the facts as they actually are, look at the footage that exists, uh, and and see the investigation re as reported, say, by the New York Times. The investigations, the, these investigations are all bullshit. That's all it is. But They'll you, make up whatever what, they want. But why do you, you know, what what makes you decide? What, let's set this aside for a second. What makes you decide who you're going to believe and who you're not going to believe? In other words, what, uh, what makes you think that the New York Times uh, uh, coverage of this oh, event and their six months investigation and their, oh, and their tireless looking at all of the footage and putting it together with narrative yeah, is true. what it's makes like, you decide that that's wrong because it doesn't agree with your political point of view or what? I don't even believe the Kennedy assassination was investigated properly. So this is a little uh, small one compared to that one. So, no, I don't believe anything in government. I don't trust any of our governments. Okay. Nothing whatsoever. I don't so even you... trust the conservatives half the time that are in, in Congress. Well, then why do you, but, but why do you trust uh, President Trump? Or why do you, I mean, he's in government. Or why do you but trust him? He never lied to me once about it. He got in there and he started doing things, what he said he was going to do, and he did them. And yeah. he, got, he got the Democrats to try to stop him everywhere he could. But well, he did get a lot done, and uh -huh. he's going to go back in again. Gary, you have been filled with all this crap from the Democrats. Now, I don't know if you're a Democrat or if you're just a Democrat that believes them, you know, because there are people that believe these lies. Well, or you're either part of the problem, and you're part of the problem. To, you're help hurt this guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Look, well, at, everybody's calling in and saying just the opposite of what you believe. Well, yes, that's true. Why are we all out here saying the same thing? Well, that that's true. That everybody who has called KSEO, except for Billy, uh, disagrees with me. But that doesn't mean that I am not. That doesn't mean that I'm incorrect. Hey, wait a minute. I want to. I'm. <clears throat> I apologize for being away, and I apologize especially to Gary because <laughs> I I left him in the, in the den of uh, in the den of uh, in the den of uh, lions here. But I want to ask Rich and Selena something. Uh -huh. Rich, you obviously disagree with Gary uh, vehemently. Uh, would you be? Would you be? Would you rather KSCO did not have Gary as a host? I've never listened to his program. That's that's your, you know, his privilege, and your lady let him get on air. Yeah, but I wouldn't but, listen to the program. But you wouldn't listen. Okay. All right. Yeah. That that that's a good answer, I guess. You know, no, no one's forcing anybody to, to listen. Show. But yes. for me. For me, if I have anything to say about it, I want a station to reflect everybody's opinions. Yeah, you know, well, and not just not just conservatives or just liberals. I think that stinks. I really you know, do. I, but I, I, yeah, but well, I, I, I I pride myself in being willing to listen to everybody, and and not just automatically dismiss them because I can't stand their politics. Well, that's good. Well, that's a, a good attitude. What? You're friends with him, MZ. You're friends with him. So, you know, that's part of it. You've known him for a while, I assume. Well, you know, I, I, think Gary's, I think Gary's a very nice person, and I, and I think he's, I think he's a, a class act all the way, <laughs> and, I, and he and I think differently about politics. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe this is too strong a word. You hate Trump. And I love Trump. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I love Trump, and that's not that's not a bad that's that's an understatement. Yeah. If I could love, if I could, if there's a better word than love, I would use it. Uh -huh. My vocabulary isn't as good as yours. Yes. Did, does is hate the wrong word? I think it's the exact word for you. I think you no, do hate Trump. No, I I don't. Uh, I I try not to hate. Okay. I, I think hate well, is what, a what is a do? destructive. Uh, well, what's a good word? To I use? would prefer that he was not president of the United States. Okay. Um. You know, I didn't hate. Uh. You know, I I don't. You know, unless someone has done something personally to me or something, I I, I don't feel that hate is a useful uh thing. I mean, I I think he's entitled to his um his opinion, and I think that when 
whoever a person is, so let's take Trump out of the equation for a minute, whoever is elected president of the United States, whether it's Barack Obama or Donald Trump, I think the country should give that person the opportunity to accomplish something. And I think that the idea that Congress has now, which is they're going to put their foot down no matter what. You know, I'm, I'm not happy with propaganda in any form. For instance, when I was watching, occasionally watch Rachel Maddow on MSNBC, and I, and I, I appreciate her program, but whenever she talks about Rudolph Giuliani, she shows the ugliest possible picture that she can find of Rudy Giuliani. And I think that's silly. You don't need to make it any worse by having some, you know, visual propaganda. Tell us what you believe or tell us what your investigation has determined. We can judge it on our own. We don't need a visual uh, to put him down or something. That's, uh, so uh, either side, I don't want it to be these two bubbles that are um, any, I don't believe anything that they say. and I don't believe anything that they say because here in the, one of the things that's happened here in those last 15 minutes is in the face of actual footage, actual evidence, these people have said to me, I don't believe anything they say. I don't believe it because I don't agree with it. I believe they are liberals and I'm a conservative. Therefore, it's kind of like religion. It's become a religion. That is, if you, if you, believe, in, uh, if you believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior, then nothing in the world I could say would make you stop believing that, right? On the other hand, if you don't believe that, then nothing in the world I could say would make you believe it. Belief is something that is, comes from within. But well, po- why don't people want to hear both sides like politics I do? Do you want to hear both way. sides? Yes, politics should not be a belief system where we, we can't accept facts from the other side. There are facts. These are, are true things that actually occurred. And... You know, to say, the, well, that didn't happen. They're walking quietly through. Nobody pushed or shoved. Nobody broke open doors. Uh, there's footage of people breaking open doors. I, I was watching it live on television when it was happening. In eight different places, the Capitol was breached. It is true that at some point the police, you know, were overwhelmed and they opened the door rather than be beaten with sticks, you know, yeah. And this guy said, well, they didn't have any weapons. Well, okay, they didn't have guns, or they had sticks. They had their own. There's a, there's a there's footage of the uh, Proud Boys leading the uh, the insurrection into the Capitol, yeah, spraying chemical sp- spraying chemical weapons into the face of police. That exists. That happened. MZ. Yeah, go ahead, Rich. What? Yeah, I, I'll just say one last thing. Everything that they, since Trump got elected, and even before that, when they started spying on everything that they accused him of doing, they did to deflect it off of them, including the Russian investigation, the impeachments that he went through after impeachment after he left office. They have they have the hatred, like you said, for this guy because he was dismantling the deep state. He was taking it apart, and they're trying to put it back together now with a bunch of bronies in there. I mean, who in the right mind would elect Biden who can't even get through a speech sometimes? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you who. I don't know if Gary will agree with this. He probably won't. The CCP. This wasn't the Democrats. It's the CCP who are controlling, who are using the Democrats as their their, their tools. Millions and millions and millions and millions of Americans voted for Joe Biden, just as millions of Americans voted for Donald Trump. They are Americans and they voted. That's the way our system works. Of and all the events that he had, there was a total of 90 people that showed up for every event versus Trump and his big, huge audiences. 90 people. That was stated because they counted the number of people at each event. They're all sitting on a chair in a circle. And all those events. And even the one that they went to in Las Vegas. Well, there was a pandemic, remember? Nobody showed up for that one. There was a pandemic, if you recall. Yeah, I know. I mean, Be- before there was a pandemic, there, there, there was a, a great difference in the numbers of people Trump would attract and the difference and uh, what the other side would attract. 
That, that's a, that's a true statement. Okay. Look, okay, yeah. okay we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to. Gary and I can certainly agree to disagree. I don't know whether you and Gary can agree to disagree. <laughs> I, <laughs> Rich, I agree that we disagree. I have a lot of liberal friends. And we argue about this all the time, you know, and they're not going to believe what I say, and I'm not going to believe what they say. So okay, so all righty. Thank you for okay. calling. You. Next caller will be uh, Stephen Monterey. Okay, Hi, go ahead, Steve. Steve. Hi, You're on. Thanks. Hi. Hi, Steve. Thanks, Mike. You can hear me fine, right? Yes. Yeah. Thanks for calling, okay. Steve. Well, the, yeah, the, it's a naive and disingenuous to suggest that the Proud Boys have not already been infiltrated by the FBI and such, okay? Okay, stop. Naive and when you say it's naive, tell me, where is your evidence that they were infiltrated by the FBI? The FBI makes it their business to infiltrate any subversive organization to suggest otherwise is disingenuous and naive. Well, when you're saying that, then then give me the factual information that you're. It's not they're just not going to you're, you're just going inferring to it, but you're you can't tell me exactly that it's true. You're just inferring it, I, and you're saying that because I, I, I can't I, I, believe it, that that makes me naive. But you don't have any proof that it's true. I, I do have proof, but okay, my, good. my my personal experience as the John Lennon man when I went to the FBI oh. office. When you're, I went to the FBI uh, office, listen to me. Yes, I no, I've listened FBI to you. You called me on my show. You're, you're, you're the person who believes that Stephen King uh, assassinated John Lennon? And you're the fool who doesn't. Okay, because but I don't agree now, with Steve, you. Steve, was that a kind That thing makes to say. me a fool? Because I don't agree with you? You are a fool. You never even saw a trial for anybody who killed John Lennon. That makes you a fool right on its Well, face. there but was, in fact, went... a trial. No, we've, we've had this discussion. There, there was no, a there, trial. There wasn't a there, there was a trial, a trial in which no, in, in which the person who... Well, we have so many people that we better yeah, move on. Thank you, Steve, Thanks for calling 479-1080. Here's yeah. uh, Glennis in Santa Cruz. Oh, about good. politics. Oh, good. Hi, Glennis. Hi. Hi, glad you called. Oh, How are you? I, I don't know. I am in shock. I'm sitting here and I'm in shock. How... All these people have called in and insulted Gary. He's the most kindest person. I mean... He's not insulting to people when people call him. I've never I mean, heard Gary insult were... anybody. Would you like to insult somebody just to? Uh, I don't. No, I don't get it. Yeah, you're that, not. Man. Yeah, you're not uh, Mr. wired that way. Mr. Swirling, Mr. Swirling, is that your name? Yes, it's Mr. Swirling. Okay, thank you. Um, Gary is the voice of reason in my book. I mean, these people have called in and and just attacked him. What I. <laughs> I think Gary needs to have his own show and not a part. He does. Didn't you know that? You can catch me twice. He's a got. Week. He's got not only his own show, his own two shows. <laughs> right, I have twice. Two no, shows. he's not. No, no, no. He's on a show that's a little tainted toward the right, and people are going to call in and insult him like they have been for the last hour or two. Are you no talking one, about the Noon Bloom you know, show that he does on Tuesday? It's tainted to the right. I don't think it's tainted to the right if 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 Gary's the host of it. <laughs> how, I, I how, can you, I how can you I, say I, that? I hope you'll listen every Tuesday from noon to I, two. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, go First ahead. of all, I've been listening to KSCO for comic relief oh. <laughs> until Gary until Gary started in the show. Well, thank you and for being a loyal that. listener. Anyhow, even though I we know. obviously do. Uh, much of what you hear on KSCO is laughable to you, right? I know. But so is Rush, was Rush Limbaugh and his predecessor, Mr. Friedman. But what I'd like to see is Mr. Friedman and Gary on a debate. That's what today was supposed to be. And I, I, I refuse to believe that, 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 that Charlie was chicken bleep. It could have I, I don't... No, 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 no. Can I... I'm sorry, can I... Speak for yes, a moment. Go right ahead. Without any, without, I love everything that you've any, said so far. Without any interjections, please. Okay. I think Mr. Friedman insults people when they call him in. He never, he doesn't, he just, I, I don't know how the guy has his own show. And there's no one ever to counter what he says. He, he, he's always for Trump. He's always, he never says kind things about President Biden. I mean, I just don't get it, but I do. If I did get it, I'd be one of, of a Republican, which I'm not. I'm a proud Democrat. But Gary, you seem to be the kindest person, 
And um, it's a lost cause. These people are calling in and attacking you. It's not right. I know freedom of speech, yay. But anyhow, I think that's all I have to say. Well, I appreciate I really, your support. Thank I, you so I really much. wish you had your own radio station is what I wish you had. Oh, my own station. Well, I might buy this exactly. one. Your we can we can enter into serious discussion because <laughs> okay. I am getting out of KSCO. I'll I, take it. I am tell you, totally me, getting out. Let me count. So I might so have I'm to pay out. somebody to take it off my hands. <laughs> well, in that case, you know. Oh, good. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that'd be wonderful. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, Glennis, would you be willing to spearhead an effort? to buy KSCO, to put together a group to buy KSCO, and you could turn it into 1,000% liberal so that it, you, everybody oh, you no. hear uh, oh, agrees no. with you? Oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I was suggesting by no means. <laughs> Boy, you... I, just, <laughs> I just wanted to have a counter every time Mr. Friedman would, would say something unbelievable that someone could come in and the, interject the best i can the offer voice you of reason, the, the voice of reason which would be gary shapiro wait a minute Sh should this be a should, th <laughs> should this be a station <laughs> requirement you. the best i can offer you is that every tuesday after charlie's show you can hear me and i will offer a, a rebuttal thank you no wait I, a minute glennis it. is that okay <laughs> is that okay or are you are you going to insist that oh, that no. Charlie that that every time Charlie says something that I that's, <laughs> that 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 someone that 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 uh, uh, Gary is in the room with him to rebut. Yeah, you, know. you know that that would be a dream. <laughs> I really, I mean, there's some things that Charlie has said that I really wish someone would have come in and said. You know, it's just it's just. Well, you know, that's why we. Have Did you ever think of you being that that's person? Right. That's why we have calls. You can. No, call you in. know why? You know, no, no. You know why I couldn't be that person, or there isn't any person, because once you have an idea in your head, no one is ever going to change it. Just like the insurrectionist. I've never heard no, Charlie be rude to anybody. Have, have you tried oh, to? Have you? Yeah, have you tried to call him? Did he hang up on you or anything? Mr. Swirling, yes. remember that uh, Remember that saying, see something, say something? Let's, let's live by that. I got to go. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks for calling. Uh, you know, I think we... Um, one she thing didn't about... want to engage with me at all. That's, just, that's very clear. She doesn't like you. <laughs> she doesn't... Well, that's, no, okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. No, I think... I'm sure I, no, that's I'm, very I'm clear, teasing. but... I'm going to pray for Glennis. <laughs> I, I think that... Uh, I'll probably well, drive her insane. I haven't heard... <laughs> Although I, I don't always agree with Charlie, I have never heard him be rude. And I think we really try hard uh, to... Whoops. Oh, you're still on. Good. I'm you, still on. I thought you hung I'm up. Uh, my, my, I apologize. <laughs> now she did hang up. I think the, uh, the, the thing is I've never heard him be rude. And I think we always try to, whatever point of view we have, to hear your point of view, listeners. And uh, I'm so happy that you call on the Noon Balloon. And, and I uh, always love getting emails from you and hearing from you. And it's really Even if you're sparring with people who disagree with yeah, you. Because fine. as long as it's respectful. I don't want people to call me a fool. Yeah, like Steve Lightfoot did, huh? Yes, yes. That wasn't very nice. I mean, just because we don't agree doesn't make one of us stupid. Yeah. All right, let's take the next caller, and that would be Gary and Live Oak. Yeah, my, uh, <laughs> Michael, I think you were dead on about the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, and their influence. In fact, it's uh, Nancy Pelosi that... Uh, voted into the Intelligence Committee, Eric Swalwell, that sits on the Intelligence Committee that not only bedded a red Chinese communist, but had one of their interns in addition. I'm looking at a report about riots that came out last July, and on page 11, uh, they include those people that were involved. Across a report from, the page a report is, is, from who? I'm sorry. Well, oh. let me let me get this out so I get the information instead of your stalling people. If people listen, I'm not stalling you. I'm asking Gary you makes from himself, where he... Gary no. makes himself the victim in order to block data coming out, and that's what he's doing right now. Let no, I'm read. simply asking you where are from from where well, let are me you read reading? the report. See, he's uh, a report, he a won't report let the information from where? come out. You're not letting the information come out. A let report me, from let where? Let me say what I want to say. And then you ask me what I want to do. Well, we have four more people that we have to get on before the end of the show. So, so can you tell up, us Gary. the source well, of your report? Right now, the, the report 
mentions the, the Revolutionary Communist Party, the Communist Forward, the Color of Change, and California Forward. California Forward was founded by Leon Panetta. You nor Charlie ever mentioned Panetta Gate. There are two monuments in, in honor of an espionage red Chinese uh, uh, agent on the courthouse steps. And uh, there's a picture with Angela Davis involved in uh, founding Black Lives Matter, which the city council has uh, printed across the, you know, the face of their, their city council road, and uh, you're blocking that information. And I don't find you as near as nice uh, as uh, Alger Hiss. You're a propagandist, and you play the victim because you can't take the information or allow enough time for uh, uh, conversing. Okay. Gary, thank you for calling 479. Here's Joe in else. Santa Cruz. Okay, Joe, good. you're on. Hi, Joe. Yeah, well, first, Gary talks about uh, Charles Friedman when he's not there, for whatever reason, about how he Charles Friedman belittled, I guess, some titles that maybe college professors have or whatever. You say, maybe, oh, well, lots of people have them. They're not just college professors. People who have been educated have degrees. Okay, well, maybe you took it out of context. Maybe, maybe Charles Friedman was talking about how these college professors – are working their leftist uh, agenda about we either were victims or oppressors. Maybe he's talking about that. I don't know. He's not there to defend himself, but you talked about him. The other thing about you said about the government, oh, the government's so damn good. The same government, you see, you leftists think that, that we all need the government to run our lives. You know, like the government who harassed NZ about what he can build on his own property that he pays property taxes on. The same government, like in California, where the government just waved his hand during this pandemic and shut all these businesses down. And By the way, we're probably going to have to jackhammer, speaking about the government and MZ's property, we're probably going to have to jackhammer our beautiful potty patio that we've had many, many potties at. Because, um, you mean this over here? Yeah, no, we're I probably going to have to jackhammer it out according to the city, the county of Santa that's Cruz. Yeah. Um, and that's so, so we have the... So we have this biased leftist in this government telling us how to run our lives. And like I said, in California, he waved his hand. All these businesses had to shut down. He sick the, the law enforcement and the prosecutor on that guy in Monterey who tried to run his business. And um, instead of doing it the American way, the American way is you give us the accurate information. You update us on the accurate information and you tell us, hey, this virus is going to hurt you, maybe kill you in a slow, miserable way if you have underlying health conditions you might want to wear a gas mask not a not these stupid masks a gas mask if you want to go outside and if you may want to shut down your business but leave it up to the people not this leftist crap this socialist crap trying to run our lives okay there. thanks thanks for the call i'm gonna uh ha say goodbye because um we're uh, we're almost out of time and i want to get two more i want to you want to say goodbye to you because oh okay. we, look, look if you see what time it is look look at the clock. i know here. i know i know oh uh, yeah i don't think we can take calls because i want to say uh I, I want you and i to talk for one more minute before sure um i mean i appreciate all the calls and i really i, I and i you know if you don't agree with me that's great and you can call me and talk to me further on tuesday uh, from noon uh, to two, and I hope you will. And you can also send me an email at Gary at uh, KSCO. And but I I I just want to say that it's such a great uh, honor for me to be here on the Saturday special. I'm so uh, <laughs> no, I was just I wanted to do a, a traditional Saturday special like from the '90s to have competent, articulate spokesperson on uh, people on both sides. And it was going to be you and Charlie. Well, but I talked to Charlie, that. and Char maybe someday Charlie was was this holiday weekend, and it would I. I I can't expect him to come in. He works all week. He works you know. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Him to do his so job we would. Right? That's what we tried to do, and that's what this what what this was intended to be. And when you had agreed to do it, and I didn't get back to you right away as I should have, <laughs> you said, "Hey, MZ, are we still on yeah. on, on Thursday or something?" I said, "Yeah. Uh, well, Charlie won't be here, but I'd like you to come on anyhow." And, it's and you been did. So fun. It's really been lovely to sit and talk with you and wow. to hear from all of your listeners and uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, you can listen to me and and agree or disagree with me every Monday evening at 7 for from the bookshelf every Tuesday afternoon at noon on the noon balloon and every other Wednesday I'm on with Rosie in the morning to talk about books and every other Thursday which would be this coming Wednesday and Thursday to talk about movies uh, with Alex okay I don't know if there's time for the that